Oh, it's good to, good to sense the Spirit of the Lord this morning. Oh, it's so good to be here. Pastor Shannon called yesterday morning, and I could hardly recognize who it was. Uh, lost his voice. His voice is coming back. We prayed for that. But he said, Pastor George, <laughs> yes, do you think you might be able to preach for me in the morning just a short message? I said, well, I'll be able to preach for you, but forget the short. <laughs> No, we've got a celebration service coming in a few moments, and we want to give all the attention to that and be aware of that. But it is good, Pastor Shannon, thank you for allowing me the privilege of being here this morning. Fifty-one years, folks. I've been, I've been running to the pulpit to preach the gospel. Some of you remember when I could run up these steps. Now you've got to help me up the steps. I went to the bookstore the other day to buy a large print Bible. Some of you can relate to that. I went in and searched all the, all the Bibles out to buy a large print Bible, and I came out with extra large print Bible. And I still can't see it. Oh, God is good all the time. And it's good to be here. And when Pastor Shannon called, I began to pray and seek God's will. And my mind went to the Gospel of John. I'm going to ask you to turn there this morning very quickly. Gospel of John. John is a marvelous book. A marvelous book. If you're needing a place to start your devotion, start in the Gospel of John. If you want to learn about Jesus and the miracles of Christ, start in the book of John. It'll inspire you. It'll bless you. And it begins that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It establishes exactly who God is from the very beginning. And the good news, folks, is that He's the same today as He was then. God has not changed. But the Gospel of John deals with more than any other of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, deals with the miracles of Jesus. John chapter 1 begins with John coming out of the desert, out of the wilderness, preaching the message of repentance, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They said, are you the Christ? He said, oh no, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not even worthy to unlatch his shoes. But he's coming. And then John saw him coming down the road, and he lifted up his voice in praise. He said, here he is. Here he comes, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus made his public appearance. And then he began his ministry. And in John chapter 3, the story of Nicodemus, as he came to Jesus by night, said, good master, what must I do to be saved? Jesus said, you need to be born again. How do you do that? Do you enter into your mother's womb? No, 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 no. You need to be born of the Spirit and of the water. And that night, that great teacher became a child of God. A miracle of Jesus. In John chapter 4, there was a woman at the well. She met Jesus, and Jesus said, would you give me some water? And she said, sir, you don't understand I'm a Samaritan, you a Jew, and we don't have any relationships at all. And yet you're asking me for water? And Jesus said, if you knew who was asking of you this, you would not hesitate. And he said to her, I will give unto you the water of life that you'll never, ever thirst again. And that day she accepted Jesus. And then he said to her, go tell your husbands. <laughs> and she looked at him and she said, sir, I have no husband. And Jesus, who knows it all, said, you're right. You've had five husbands, and the man you're living with now is not your husband. But go gather these men and bring them here to the well. And she ran back into the city and brought all of these men to Jesus. And every one of them that day gave their heart to the Lord and ran into the city to change that city for Jesus' sake. And then there's, there's the pool of Bethesda. Jesus walked among those that were sick. The story goes that at a certain season of the year, the angel would come and touch the water, and the first one into the pool would be healed. And Jesus walked among the sick that day and found the man on the cot sick for 38 years. And he walked up beside him and said, Sir, would you like to be made whole? Isn't that a funny question to ask a sick person? And that man said, Sir, I have no one. When the water is troubled to help me into the pool, Others are receiving help, but I have no one. And Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. 
And he performed a great healing miracle in that man's life. It's just like Jesus, isn't it? And then there's the feeding of the 5,000 plus. They only had five loaves and two fishes, hardly enough to feed a person. And yet Jesus blessed it and, and, and distributed it throughout that crowd, had, had his disciples to distribute it. And when it was all said and done, they had feasted well. There were 12 basketfuls left over, one for every disciple. Isn't that just like Jesus to supply every need? But you're saying, I know what you're saying, Pastor George, wait a minute. You've missed the chapter. You've missed a chapter, a very important chapter. Let's go back to chapter 2. And sure enough, we read the account of the very first miracle that Jesus ever performed. And believe it or not, it was a marriage ceremony. And in a few moments, we're going to celebrate with a lovely couple who's all excited this morning about taking those vows and uniting with God and uniting with one another. And they've invited all of us to be a part of that. And we're excited for them. But Jesus was excited about the wedding feast. Mary and the ladies were invited guests. Jesus and his disciples were invited guests. And all of a sudden, they discovered they had run out of refreshments. They had no refreshments to serve their guests. Now keep in mind that the wedding feast in those days not only lasted for days, it lasted for weeks. And here they are, no refreshments to serve their guests. It was an embarrassing time. They were humiliated. They didn't know what to do. But I want you to catch the faith of Mary, the mother of Jesus. She said, Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Now keep in mind that at this point Jesus had not performed one miracle. He had not demonstrated his power at all before people. And yet Mary had enough faith to realize he's the Messiah and he's able to do all things. And she said to those in charge of the wedding feast, you go to Jesus, listen to what he has to say, and whatever he tells you, do it. Oh, folks, <laughs> I wish we could learn that early on, don't you? If we could learn that early in life, it would save us a lot of problems and a lot of heartaches and a lot of trouble, if we'd learn to take our problems to Jesus and lay them at His feet, pour it out to Him. He knows it all anyway. There's no surprises with God. And then we listen to what He has to say, and when He tells us, then we immediately obey Him. And that's the way to victory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, they did. They did. They took their problem to Jesus and said, Sir, we've got a problem. <laughs> we don't have any refreshments to offer our, our guest at all. And Jesus said, bring the water pots to me. And they brought six of those water pots. He said, fill them to the brim, 20 or 30 gallons each. And they did. And then Jesus breathed a holy breath upon that water. And it turned to the purest wine that you could find. You couldn't buy it in a store. Only Jesus could provide it. But it was the very best that heaven had to offer. And they were elated. They were beyond themselves. Oh, you've saved the best to last. And now they could take care of their, their, their guest in a rightly way. And they were so glad that Jesus was there. And he had met their needs uh, because he loved them. That was the reason. He loved them. He felt honored to be there on that special occasion in that wedding feast. He loved those people. He wanted them to be happy. He wanted their needs to be met. Uh, and so he demonstrated his power as only he could. Folks, I want to tell you something. Our God is still on the throne. Our God is still on the throne. Our God is still in the miracle working business. He still loves you. He loves you. He knows where you are. He knows every burden and every care and every problem and everything that's going on in your life. And He cares for you. And there's a miracle waiting just for you if you listen to what God has to say. And then we obey Him. I say praise be to the Lord. What a miracle. The wedding feast. The very first. I think it's ironic that we're celebrating the wedding today. At that first wedding feast. What a miracle it was. To meet the needs of that people in such a fashion. They never got over it. They fell in love with Jesus. They began to follow him. And from that day forth he demonstrated his power. Folks I want to leave you with these words. God loves you. And God loves his church. 
And God wants to meet every need of your life. I don't care what it is. Uh, I don't care where you are spiritually uh, or where you are financially or where you are in your life. God cares about you. Uh, and if you'll bring your needs to Him, uh, He's able to fill your heart overflowing. That's just like Jesus. And I say, praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord. That's the word of the Lord this morning. Pastor Shannon, come and lead us in our celebration. Amen. Amen. Aren't you thankful for Pastor George this morning? Yes. Amen. I have a whole other sermon, but you guys are lucky I'm not going to preach it this morning. This morning we are very excited for, for Alan and Diane. They've been preparing for quite a while for this wedding, getting ready. But most importantly, God's been preparing you for each other. And this morning it's a privilege to be able to perform this ceremony here before your family your church family, and a lot of your great friends. And this morning, if you two would come forward, we want to begin this service for you all. Amen. Amen. Got some face paint. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, uh, face paint. <laughs> here we go, here we go. There you go. <laughs> That's all right. I'm not marrying you. He is, okay? That's all right. <clears throat> I'm performing a ceremony. Uh, dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join together this man and woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's innocence, signifying unto us the mystical union which exists between Christ and his church. This holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle, which he brought in Cana of Galilee, and St. Paul commended as being honorable among all men. It is therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly, but reverently and discreetly, and in the fear of God. Into this present estate, these persons now come to be joined. Alan and Diane, I require you and charge you both as you stand in the presence of God, to remember that the commitment to marriage is a commitment to permanence. It is the intent of God that your marriage will be for life. And only death shall separate you. If the vows you exchange today be kept without violation, and if you seek to always know and to do the will of God, your lives will be blessed with his presence, and your home will abide in peace. I still see your face when we're apart time cannot erase Visions of your smile, your warm embrace, how it drives me wild. Daydreams of you, daydreams of you. Summer nights in June. Holding hands neath that harvest moon, springtime walks in the rain, in winter time you can feel love's flame, daydreams of you, daydreams of you. When I close my eyes and lay my head down low Don't you know you're the one I've been dreaming of so Don't want to live without you Can never live without your love Daydreams of you 
Daydreams of you. Daydreams of you. Daydreams of you. Amen. 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 Alan, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's holy ordinance in the holy state of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others only unto yourself as long as you both shall live? Diane, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's holy ordinance, in the holiest state of matrimony, will you love, honor, keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keeping yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live? I will. If you guys would face each other now, we want to exchange vows. Alan, I want you to repeat after me. I, Alan, I'm Alan. take you, Diane. Take to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better for worse, for richer for poor, in sickness and in health, to cherish till death do us part, I pledge you my faith. Diane, would you repeat after me? I, Diane. Take you, Alan, Take you, Alan. To, be my husband, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold from, this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for, better, for, worse, for worse, for richer, for, richer, for poor, poor, in sickness, in sickness and, in health, and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish till death do, us part, death do us part. I pledge you my faith. I pledge you my faith. We will now exchange rings. Alan, would you repeat after me? This ring I give you, this ring I give you as, a token of my love, as a token of my love and a pledge, a pledge of my constant faith. Of my constant faith. Okay. Go ahead and put that ring on her finger there, Mr. Allen. My hands are sweaty. <laughs> he said his hands are sweaty. <laughs> He's excited. <Yeah. laughs> Diane, would you repeat after me? This ring I give you, this ring I give you as, a token of my love, as a token of my love and a pledge of my constant faith. Now move over here to our unity. All right. Alan and Diane have chosen to put together the unity heart representing their marriage. The unity heart. That's an exciting heart. <laughs> the unity heart signifies the wedding covenant. It is a lasting reminder of the bride and groom coming together with their faith in Christ beginning their long life journey as one. The bolder outer heart represents the groom. He is the strength and the cover of his family and home, yet without his bride, he is incomplete. The intricate inner part represents the bride, beautiful, and multifaceted. She brings her creative abilities and wisdom. The couple then trust their hearts to be one combined with their faith to
together in Christ. Joining the pieces of the unity heart, demonstrating their commitment to each other. The top, then completing the sculpture, says that the two have now become one. Tomorrow morning if you wake up and the sun does not appear I, I will be here If in the dark we lose sight of love Hold my hand and have no fear Cause I, I will be here I will be here when you feel like being quiet When you need to speak your mind I will listen and I will be here When the laughter turns to crying Through the winning, losing and trying We'll be together Cause I will be here Tomorrow morning if you wake up and the future is unclear I, I will be here As sure as seasons are made for change Our lifetimes are made for years So I, I will be here I will be here You can cry on my shoulder When the mirror tells us we're older I will hold you And I will be here To watch you grow in beauty And tell you all the things you are to me I will be here I will be true to the promise I have made To you and to the one who gave you to me I will be here And just as sure As seasons are made for change Our lifetimes are made for years So I I will be here We'll be together Cause I will be here Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be able to celebrate with this great couple. Lord, I thank you for Alan and Diane and Father God mostly, Father God, because of their love for you. Lord, because of their love for you, Lord, you've led them down a path, Father God, to meet one another, to fall deeply in love with each other, as they've fallen deeply in love with you. Lord, I pray that your hand of blessing, your hand of guidance, and wisdom will be placed upon their lives as a couple. Lord, as the two shall become one, Father God, in perfect unity with each other and you, Lord, I pray that you would guide them in all that they do. And Lord, may their home 
rest with your peace and your presence. It's in your name we pray. Amen. For as much as this man and this woman have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company and declared the same by the joining of hands, I pronounce that they are husband and wife together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no man but to sunder. Amen. Now through all this, I know you've had a lot of planning and stuff to do, Diane, and usually the men don't have as much planning and work to do. I've given Alan one thing that he had to work on. I said, Alan, you have to perfect the kiss. <laughs> and Alan said, don't worry, Pastor, I've been doing a lot of practice. I don't know what all that means. But I would like to say now, Alan, you may kiss your bride. That's good, Alan. <laughs> I would now like to introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Alan Dooley. Amen. Thank you.